We can prove retaliation and in general discrimination using circumstantial evidence. And the most common type of circumstantial evidence used in discrimination cases, especially retaliation cases, is called temporal proximity. That's legal speak for two things that happened about the same time. When that happens, EEOC tends to infer that the first thing caused the second thing, which can be really helpful in retaliation cases, especially in the beginning when we're trying to put together our prima facie case for retaliation. In general, the shorter the time between our protected activity and our employer's retaliatory actions, the more likely EEOC is to assume that our protected activity is what caused our employer to retaliate. The more time there is between, the less likely that becomes. Employers realize how important temporal proximity can be to a retaliation case. And sometimes the shady ones try to game the system by delaying the retaliatory action until a significant amount of time has passed. They use the waiting game to cover up the real timing of their decision to retaliate. So, for instance, instead of firing us right away, it may take some time to build a record of poor conduct or poor performance that they can use to justify firing us later. And that's the type of situation that I want to focus on today. But I do want to mention another way that employers can do away with temporal proximity, and that's by retaliating before we've had a chance to document our protected activity. And that more commonly happens to people who take the time to try to work things out in good faith with management before documenting their concerns. This gives them the opportunity to retaliate immediately. That's why it's important to put our complaints in writing and gather evidence of the original discrimination before we open our mouths to anyone in management. We have to act in good faith and we hope our employer will do the same, but we need to cover our bases just in case they decide to play dirty. Now let's get back to the more common scenario where our employer is biding their time to retaliate. To be able to build a prima facie case for retaliation, we'll have to show that we participated in a protected activity, that we were subjected to an adverse action, and that the protected activity caused the adverse action. And of course, the simplest way to show that our protected activity is what caused the retaliation is temporal proximity. And without temporal proximity, it's going to be a lot harder to establish causation. If our employer tries to game the system by putting off retaliation until they think the coast is clear, there's not much we can do to change that. We can't stop them. The best we can hope for is to protect ourselves. But how do we protect ourselves from something that hasn't happened yet? I mean, they're not doing anything to us yet. <laughs> and that is the whole point. They're not doing anything yet. So if they're not retaliating, chances are they're not doing anything to fix the original discrimination either. That gives us lots of opportunities to document what they're not doing, which can help us not just with our original discrimination case, but also with our case for retaliation. We should keep in mind that petty slights and annoyances are not illegal, so we don't want to be pestering our employer over every little thing. But we employees are not judges. Most of us don't really know what a petty annoyance is versus real harassment. To us, it can feel the same. We may not know the difference until after the fact. So I say when we're concerned about something, it's fine to bring that to the attention of management and to ask some polite but bold questions. Reporting our concerns gives us a chance to fill in our timeline with more instances of protected activity, which minimizes our employer's chances of finding a safe time to retaliate. Of course, we don't want to make up reasons to be upset but when they do something we think is illegal, I think we should take that seriously and document it rather than just ignoring it and hoping it stops. In the beginning of my case, when NASA was delaying taking action on my request for reasonable accommodation, I wrote to my boss and the diversity manager about once a week asking about the status of my request. What's happened since my last email? What's the next step in getting my reasonable accommodations approved? And who's responsible for taking that step? And in every one of those emails, I also made the point that I still urgently needed to be reasonably accommodated. I didn't want them to forget that part. Even after NASA gave me the worthless, on paper, only reasonable accommodations they provided me with, I continued to email the diversity manager about my concerns as they arose. If my boss wouldn't let me use my reasonable accommodations, I let him know and ask what they planned to do about it. If my boss was hostile to me or did things to isolate or humiliate me, I let them know that too, and ask what they plan to do to stop it. And if they didn't answer me, 
which was often, I took that as another opportunity to reasonably ask, hey, what's going on? Last week, I asked you what you were going to do about this, and I haven't heard back from you, so I thought I'd check in with you and see what you've decided. It doesn't have to be hard. We need to document all the discrimination and all the retaliation from the very beginning of our process all the way through. It takes courage to do that. Most of us don't like to make waves at work. It's scary. So when they're not actively retaliating against us, it's easy to justify just trying to keep our head low and stay under the radar. But trying to keep our head low can play right into their hand. An employer who is biding their time to retaliate depends on us to be quiet in the meantime. They need to create a lag between our protected activity and their retaliatory actions. That lag is what's going to make it safe for them to retaliate later. For what it's worth, once we're in this fight, it's impossible to keep our heads low enough to avoid retaliation. If they're going to retaliate, they're going to retaliate, and there's not much we can do about that. So let that free you up to do what you have to, to protect yourself and win your case. Every time we report some new act of discrimination or retaliation, we're dropping another breadcrumb on the timeline of our protected activity. And the more breadcrumbs we drop, the harder it's going to be for them to find a good time to retaliate against us. <laughs> That's my take anyway. Feel free to share yours in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care and hang in. Bye, smart.